Hello everyone. Welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more. Today we have a continuation of fluoride topics that is uh, defluoration techniques. So in this video I'll be explaining about various uh, defluoration techniques which are commonly used by the uh, Indians that is uh, 15 out of uh, 30 states have affected with uh, fluorosis so the common practices which are seen in india is explained in this video so i have explained you uh, about um, fluoride as a double-edged sword in my uh, fluoride toxicity video uh, because once it is uh, going low it can uh, cause or it can attribute to formation of tendal caries and if it is going high it causes fluorosis so in 1984 uh, who guidelines suggested that there should be one ppm uh, for the optimal uh, fluoride uh, one ppm should be the optimal fluoride concentration so as to get the maximum benefit of it to prevent uh, prevent dental caries so if it, it is a, a warmer climate uh, the ph uh, the ppm can be low around 0 0.7 0 0.8 and if it is a cooler climate it can go up to 1.2 so the range varies between 0.7 to 1.2 because uh, it is affected with the uh, temperature so uh, we can uh, we have already learned uh, the modeling because in the history of fluorides we have seen the mortal enamel if it goes higher uh, the mottling and uh, discrete pitting will be seen so if it goes one two uh, three four five range it causes a severe uh, destruction of the tooth so uh, for your information the highest uh, naturally occurring fluoride is recorded in a lake in kenya and the lake is known as nakuru and it has 2800 milligram per liter that is 2800 ppm so we are talking about one two three ppm but uh, this lake has 2800 ppm this milligram per liter is ppm so india has uh, 15 out of 32 states that includes union territories uh, we don't have 32 states as such uh, it includes union territories so 15 of total this states and union territories are affected with fluorosis that is endemic fluorosis is present for a very longer period because uh, uh, groundwater has high amount of uh, fluoride content so in india we have uh, in usa we have seen uh, the community water fluidations uh, where happened in many cities but in india there is no possibility of community water fluoridation because we are suffering from the excess of uh, excess amount of fluorine or the fluorosis so we are always thinking about defluoridation not the water fluoridation because we are at the other edge of the uh, fluorine because we are getting disadvantage out of fluorine So mainly the Gujarat, Rajasthan, Andhra are uh, the 50 to 100 percentage of the district in these states are affected. In Kerala it is uh, Alapi and Palakkad were affected mostly. But in these states have a severe uh, attack of this uh, fluorosis that is almost 50 to 100 percent districts are affected. So let's come to the point that is defluoration. So what we are doing is we are removing fluoride from the drinking water that is the idea behind defluoration so what we can do is either we can remove the fluoride from water or you can uh, go for an alternative source of uh, safe water uh, and bring water from a very distant sources so those are the options we have but the most uh, convenient and most uh, feasible method is uh, defluoration that is remove the fluoride from the water we have so we have few methods defluoration and uh, by definition it is a downward adjustment of level of fluoride in drinking water to the optimal level so we have learned fluoridation is upward adjustment 
so we are increasing in community water fluoridation the upward adjustment of fluoride but whereas in defluoridation it is a downward adjustment of level of fluoride in drinking water to the optimal level that is 1 ppm so we have the common methods as adsorption uh, technique ion exchange technique precipitation technique and some techniques known as a reverse osmosis so adsorption is keeping some material in the water and the fluoride will be adsorbed to the surface an exchange is uh, re replacing the fluoride ions by cations and anions precipitation is just like our uh, water purification method we add uh, alum lime and bleaching powder and precipitate the fluoride by making it a flux okay so this precipitation method is the most common also known as an algonda technique which is almost same as uh, our water fluid uh, water uh, purification or uh, the process which we have seen in the water plant the uh, flocculation uh, sedimentation filtration uh, all those procedures are same in this precipitation technique so water purification is almost same so let's see one by one first one is adsorption technique it is nothing but the adsorption of fluoride ions onto the surface of an active agent we put some active agent into the water and get the fluoride adsorbed not absorbed adsorbed on the surface so the material used are activated alumina activated carbon and bone char bone char is nothing but bones of uh, this uh, dead animals so it can uh, it has a property to adsorb uh, this fluoride okay so activated alumina uh, alumina which is uh, launched by unicef in rural india because rural india is mostly affected with fluorosis so uh, alumina can be uh, inserted into the water and it adsorbs the fluoride but the most problem uh, faced with this alumina application is um, adsorption of fluoride only at specific ph range so we have to uh, check the ph range whether it is suitable for this alumina application or not and there is always a pre post uh, ph adjustment of water water should be at a uh, proper uh, ph for this alumina activation or alumina application and there should be frequent activation of alumina is needed which makes the technique very expensive so once we use alumina it get replen it it needs to be replenished the active ingredient will be lost after a period of time so it needs to be replenished or frequent activation is required so these are the disadvantage of alumina so bone char as uh, the same uh, process bone char we put into the water and it absorbs the uh, fluoride but the problem is it depends upon the temperature and ph of the water uh, but it is uh, economic uh, bone charts are economic because uh, it is uh, maybe available not like uh, activated alumina but the main problems are it can harbor bacteria and it it is a uh, unhygienic method and it is very technique sensitive and the biggest problem in indian scenario is the cultural and religious objections we take bones of the dead animals uh, it may cause problems uh, considering the cultural sentiments so the next uh, thing in uh, adsorption technique is brick pieces column so it is almost like activated alumina so it has a, a agent uh, a compound uh, uh, is the compound which is present in the brick column is aluminum oxide which uh, adsorbs uh, fluoride and also mud pots also can be used uh, to remove fluoride so water which is uh, kept in mud pots the mud pot uh, will receive or would adsorb the fluoride and it is one of the common method which is used in the rural part because of its uh, economic point and it is commonly used commonly accepted in rural community because mud ports are easily available and it is cheap so there are some natural adsorption uh, adsorbents uh, like uh, drumstick uh, tree seeds of drumstick tree roots of vetiver grass and tamarind seeds uh, the ms swaminathan uh, research foundation that is mssrf had shown that this drumstick seeds to have a remarkable defluoridation efficiency 
which is uh, higher than that of activated alumina so which is all natural adsorption we have uh, drumstick seeds uh, roots of vetiver grass and tamarind seeds so these also can be used as an adsorbent so these were the adsorbing uh, techniques so we had seen uh, this natural adsorption adsorbents and mud pot brick pieces uh, then the bone chars activated alumina so the next we have ion exchange method so ion, ex ion exchanging method is using of synthetic chemicals namely uh, anion and cation exchange so the problem with this technique is it is very expensive and uneconomical in indian scenario because uh, indian scenario this chlorosis is mostly affected in the rural areas and they cannot afford uh, this type of equipments and this ion exchange techniques they're all um, convenient with the uh, adsorbing techniques till uh, the nalgonda technique has come into uh, practice so one of the ion exchange technique the compound used is carbon it is a cation exchange resin so it can be used on sodium and hydrogen cycle so it exchanges the cation whereas the defluoron 1 and defluoron 2 are different one so defluoron 1 has it is a sulfonated sawdust which is mixed with 2% alum solution the defluoron 2 was developed later to overcome the problem of defluoron 1 it is sulfonated coal using alumina solution okay first one was sawdust whereas the second one was coal both are sulfonated uh, so that was a very expensive method uh, this carpion defluoron 1 defluoron 2 the ion exchange method so the ion will be exchanged either the cation or anion the ion of this fluoride compound or this fluoride will be because fluoride never stays as an ion it always uh, exists as a compound so the product we apply will replace this ion or it exchanges ion and reduces the fluoride availability or the presence in the drinking water so make it to a uh, drinkable condition so this is not uh, used because of its uh, expensive nature and the most common method we use is a precipitation technique so disadvantages of ion exchange and adsorption techniques we have seen because there need to be a necessary flow system and it is often difficult to arrange if there is no pipe to water supply if people are taking water from the wells or rivers or something like that uh, ponds or such uh, water supply uh, this is not possible the two methods which I explained already are not uh, run with this uh, well system there should be a uh, flow system that is it should go through the pipes and this equipment should be connected to the pipes and there should be a this is an active agent so there should be frequent activation of the agents there should be replenishment of these agents otherwise uh, the water won't be get the fluoridation but the precipitation methods are based on the addition of chemicals uh, such as coagulants and precipitating the soluble fluoride as insoluble fluoroapatite okay so it's just like what we have seen in water water uh, purification method the big tank we add alum as a coagulant and it coagulate the impurities and the flocks are getting sedimented and it removed uh, from the bottom of this uh, chamber and then it goes to the filtration it's uh, the same principle is being applied in alconda technique uh, except uh, some extra agent uh, will be added here the nalgonda technical fluidation is almost same as water purification and it was invented by neri that is national environmental engineering research institute in nagpur and it was uh, by Nava, uh, nalke at all in 1974 it was very economical and simple method so why this nalgonda name came because nalgonda is a district in uh, andhra pradesh uh, where they used this technique as uh, a indigenous method later this institute has taken up this method and commercialized and they started building 
this plan for this rural people but uh, nalgonda is the area where this technique uh, was uh, in its primitive uh, fashion so they started it so the name was given uh, as nalgonda technique nalgonda is not in nagpur it is in andhra okay so what they doing is they are adding sequence of sodium aluminate that is alum lime and bleaching powder to the fluoride water then do the flocculation sedimentation and filtration just like uh, our uh, water purification so in uh, most commonly we add alum to the water purification plant or water purification the first step here we are adding lime and bleaching powder uh, in a sequence so that is a difference in between this uh, water purification and nalgonda technique so it can be very useful for domestic and the community water supply so this is just a flow chart what we are doing is lime alum uh, and bleaching powder will be mixed to the first uh, point of entry and there will be a rapid mixing this is flocculation then there will be sedimentation the sediment will be removed from the bottom of the chamber and this goes to the uh, filtration so filtration slowly it get filtered and to goes to a clean water tank so the process is almost same as water purification only thing is it has a different reagent lime alum and bleaching powder so mechanism is it all commonly run for a 22 liters of water the first we do rapid mixing that is coagulant will be added to this water uh, then 30 to 60 seconds with a speed of 10 to 20 rpm the coagulant is rapidly mixed so it gets uniformly dispersed so it start getting micro flocks of fluoride because of this chemical coagulant then flocculation is the second stage where it is rpm is 2 to 4 the beginning it was 10 to 20 now it is slowly run for 10 to 15 minutes the rapid mixing was 30 to 60 seconds the flocculation it is slowly uh do the uh, rotation and it started um, forming the flocks because of this coagulant the fluoride compound will get become uh, will become flocks and it's starting sedimentation so due to this gravitational force this particles will be sedimented at the bottom and it will be removed okay as we have seen in the uh, diagram okay so we add here uh, we do the rapid mixing then for flocculation this is 10 to 20 rpm 2 to 4 rpm this is for maybe one minute this is for 10 to 15 minutes then this it goes to sedimentation this is a sedimentation tank here it will slowly or slowly uh, for 10 to um, 15 minutes and 2 to 4 rpm then uh, the sediment this flock flocks are removed from here because flocculation happened here and flocculation flocks are removed from here then it goes to the filtration and filtration and finally we get the clean water so filtration is same like uh, our uh, water purification plant so it get filtered uh, and we can uh, send it for the uh, domestic supply so maintenance is uh, very cheap it uh, is like 1.6 lakh for a 250 population and uh, only we need 50 stainless steel filters and it is uh, costing around uh, 35,000 so the main advantage it's this low cost of investment and low cost of maintenance so the biggest uh, advantages are there there is no need of regeneration of media which was seen in the adsorption techniques no handling of caustic acids and alkalis the chemicals are required are readily available and it can be used for domestic which is economical symbol design construction we can use a uh, very large quantity of water which is very efficient removing chloride from high levels and very little wastage of water and needs minimum mechanical and electrical equipments there is no need of energy only need muscle power semi-skilled workers also can be used so the biggest disadvantage is if the total dissolved solid exceeds 1500 milligram per liter 
we need to do a prior desalination and hardness of water also matters if it is 200 to 600 it requires precipitation softening and if it is beyond 600 milligram per liter it needs becomes a cause for rejection or absorption of desalination so uh, there will be a high amount of sludge compared to the other methods in algonga and there is, there is a requirement of a large amount of alum so indications should be total dissolved solid should be less than 1500 milligram per liter total hardness should be 600 below 600 this should be below 1500 and raw water fluoride should be between 1.5 to 20 that is 1.5 to 20 ppm modifications are like uh, polyaluminum chloride is another compound polyaluminum hydroxysulfate also can be used and the other methods are reverse osmosis electrolysis or electrodialysis are the physical methods that are tested for defluoration so these Methods are also can be used for a very small amount of water. So reverse osmosis is like uh, we use hydraulic pressure exerted on one side of a permeable membrane. We have seen it in uh, our uh, younger classes. What is osmosis? What is reverse osmosis? We keep a semi-permeable membrane and apply hydro hydraulic pressure, which forces the water across the membrane and leaving the salt behind so leaving the salt of fluoride behind and get the clean water on the other side in electrodialysis the membrane allows the ion to pass but not the water okay so our idea is to remove the fluoride from this water so we can use a reverse osmosis keeping semi-permeable membrane or in electrodialysis the ions will be passed and the good water will be uh, left out and electrodialysis is also a uh, very expensive and uh, intensive procedures but uh, it is very rarely used all these reverse osmosis electrodialysis uh, techniques electrolysis also it is a uh, process with uh, adsorption of fluoride with freshly prepared aluminum hydroxide which is generated by anodic dissolution of aluminum or its alloy in an electrochemical cell we have learned in chemistry what is anode what is cathode what is electrolysis so once uh, electricity passes this uh, ions moves to uh, anode and cathode so that procedure also can be used to uh, remove fluoride from water uh, biggest advantage is it doesn't need any chemical and no need to pre and post treatment low volume of sludge but it is uh, uh, there is requirement of electricity so that's all about uh, defluoration techniques because uh, like i said uh, 15 out of uh, total indian states are affected with uh, fluorosis so we are into the action of defluoration not water fluoridation because we are to remove the fluoride from the water to get people a palatable or potable drinking water so that's all about uh, defluidation defluidation techniques the uh, most commonly used in algonda technique and the adsorption techniques are there this is a precipitation technique and ion exchange methods are very expensive and some other techniques we have seen reverse osmosis electrolysis uh, like that so that's all about uh, defluidation techniques I'll come up with another topic, dentistry and more. Thank you.